Okay, so let's look at this question here. It says, figure four shows a right circular cylindrical rod, which is expanding as it is heated. At time t seconds, the radius of the rod is x centimeters and the length of the rod is six x centimeters. Given that the cross-sectional area of the rod is increasing at a constant rate of pi over 20 centimeters squared per second, find the rate of increase of the volume of the rod when x is equal to two. Write your answer in the form k pi centimeters cubed per second, where k is a rational number. Okay, so for me, whenever I'm doing these questions, right, what I always do is actually look at what they are asking me for. And the question is asking me to find the rate of increase of the volume of the rod, right? So for me, when I look at this hair, well, I say, fine, well, we have a cylindrical rod, which is expanding as it is heated, which, which obviously means that the volume is going to change and the volume is going to change as time goes on. So for me, when I look at this in blue, I interpret this to be, well, the volume is changing. So it's going to be dV and it's going to change with respect to time. So it's going to be dV by dt. So this is what we're looking for. This is our answer, right? Now, whenever you're doing these questions, what you're doing is just applying the chain rule and looking for a couple of derivatives. That when we apply them here, it will give us dV dt. So the way I always do this say, is I do it like this. I say, okay, fine. I've got dV here for sure. And then I'm going to divide this by another derivative. And then I will times it by that same derivative. And this will be over dt. And this is because these two question marks will cancel out, right? And then this will leave me with dV by dt. So then the question begs, it's okay, fine. I need that question mark. And obviously that's going to be another derivative. So we need to look at our variables, which we have here. Well, we know that we have a volume because uh, the rod is expanding as it's heated. And we know we have time, the variable time, because obviously time is going to be going on. What else do we have here? The question talks about the cross-sectional area, right? The cross-sectional area of the rod is increasing at a constant rate of pi over 20. So we have another variable here. So what I always do is say, fine, I've got three variables. I've got the variable for volume, I've got the area, and I've got T. Now, we know that we have two of these already. We have V and T. So for me, that just tells me that um, the question mark that is missing is just going to be DA, right? Because that's all they've given us in the question. So I'm going to put DA here. And I'm going to put DA here. So for me, then, I say, fine, this is good because I've got my chain rule, right? I've got my expression for the chain rule. I just need to work out what both of these are and times them together and see what it gives me. Now, if I look here at the actual formula that I've got, I've got dV by dA times dA by dt. Now, if I look at this one on the right, dA by dt, well, this just means the, the rate of change of the area as time goes on. And they did tell us about that. They told us that the cross-sectional cross area of the rod is increasing at a constant rate of pi over 20 centimeters squared per second. So I'll write this out here again. We've got pi over 20 and centimeters squared per second, right? What I always do to help me out and understand what derivative this is, is by looking at the units of measurement. If I look here, this is centimeter squared, right? This is an area for sure. And then I've got per second. This is time, right? So for me, this has to be dA by dt, which is helpful because we have this in our answer here. So what I can do is say, well, then fine. I've got dV by dt, which is still what, which is what I'm still trying to find. I've got dV by dA. And we know that we're multiplying by dA by dt, which we know is pi over 20 because they gave it to us in the question. So therefore, this is my question so far. This is my answer, right? Now, looking at this, I say to myself, okay, fine. I know I need to figure out what dV by dA is. So that just tells me I need to look for expressions for the volume and the area, and hopefully I can find another variable that connects them both. Yeah. So I'm going to highlight this now. I've got dV by dA. And we're just going to apply the chain rule again, aren't we? So we've got dV by dA. And then again, we're going to have dV on the top here. It's going to be divided by another derivative. We times it by that same one, and then we're going to put dA here. Because again, these are going to cancel out, and this will give me dV by dA. So we just have to do the same principle again, to do the same process again. So what I would do now is, well, let's look at the question again and see what we can come up with when it comes to these variables, the volume and the area. So let's have a look. Well, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with a circular cylindrical rod, right? So we're dealing with a cylinder. And... What else we're dealing with is that we've got a cross-sectional area, which is obviously a circle. So if I just do these bit by bit then, well, we can say that V, which is the volume of this cylindrical rod, is just going to be the formula for the volume. 
And we know the formula for the volume is just pi r squared h, isn't it? So if that's the case, then well, we just need to figure out what the radius is or what the height is. And we can see quite clearly uh, the radius is going to be x. It's given to us right here. And the height is the same as the length, isn't it? Which is 6x. Yeah. So we could say that, fine, we've got the radius to be x. We've got the height to be 6x. So let's plug this in. So this will give us a uh, volume is equal to pi x squared and then 6x here. Now, if I tidy this up a bit, this will just give me a 6 pi x cubed. So that's fine. We've got the formula for the volume, and this is in terms of x. Now, if I look at the area now, well, this is just the circle, isn't it? And we know that it's a circle with a radius of r. So again, we could just say, well, the area is just pi r squared, isn't it? And we know, again, the radius is x. So we could say, well, that's fine. The area is now pi x squared. And then now this here is also in terms of x, isn't it? So we've got two expressions for the volume and for the area, and they're both in terms of x. This is very helpful because what we can do now is differentiate both of these, and this will be with respect to x. And that's very helpful because now we can apply it to the chain rule. So let's do it here. We've got v is equal to 6 pi x cubed. If I differentiate this with respect to x, this will give me, with well, a 3 will go to the front, 3 times 6 is 18, pi x squared. Two will drop, the three will drop to two. That's fine. And then this one will be dA by dx, wouldn't it? If I differentiate that, and this will just go to two pi x. So that's fine. We've now got expressions for the derivative of v and the derivative of a, and they're both with respect to x. This is so helpful because now, remember, that just tells us that the variable x is the missing variable in this question here. Now, be careful, though da is on the bottom so what you need to do is say well that's fine if i have da by dx then i can just take the reciprocal of that which will give me the x by da and this will just give me one over two pi x within it so that's perfect because now we can say fine we know that dv by da then is just going to be equal to right out here again this is equal to dv by dx we multiply this by dx by da and we have expressions for both of these. dv by dx was uh, 18 pi x squared. We're going to multiply this by dx by dA, which we figured out to be 1 over 2 pi x. So we're going to put this here. So this is dv by dA. Now let's just tidy up and see what we get. Well, we've got 18 on the top. We've got 2 on the bottom. 18 divided by 2 is a 9. We've also got a pi on the top and a pi on the bottom. They will cancel out, so there will be nothing there for pi. We've got x squared on the top and then 1x on the bottom. We'll just be left with 1x. So therefore, we can say that dv by dA is just equal to 9x. And remember what the question was asking us for. We needed the rate of increase of the volume of the word, which was dv by dt, which we first said was dv by dA times, BD, times by dA by dt. So now we've got everything that we need. We have dv by dA. So I'm going to plug this in now. We can say that dv by dt is equal to dv by dA, which is 9x. And we're going to times this by dv by dt, which we found at the very beginning was pi over 20. So we've got this here. Now, remember, the question did tell us we need a specific value for x, didn't it? So let's just tidy this up. We've got 9 uh, pi x over 20. And they did tell us that we need to find the rate of increase of the volume of the rod when x is 2. So all you're going to do now is just plug in x equals 2 into that. So we're going to get dv by dt is equal to 9 pi lots of 2 over 20. This is just 18 pi over 20, isn't it? And obviously divide the top and bottom by 2 will give us 9 pi over 10. Or if you want, you can write this as 9 over 10 pi. And that's it. You're done.